Welcome to another installment of Susan Sheck Photography. Today I am going to show you some similarities and differences between three different cameras that I had the opportunity to use this weekend on five weddings due to the long weekend. First, I will show you my beautiful new Sony A9, which I love. It's amazing. I mean, I basically just took it out of the box after the unboxing video and started using it because, you know, there was really no time to look through the manual and check out things. So, you know, I had a lot of you on the forums tell me like exactly what you wanted to know and what you wanted to see. So based on my experience, it's been pretty good so far. I did a firmware update last night, so I did see some significant changes and Sony really does listen. They really do want to have the best available camera for you. And then we also have the series before that, the A7R2 that I've had two of these and I've been using this with my Nikon primarily for all the weddings and they do have two different types of settings and also um, the picture quality does look really different on both cameras so I'll also be getting into that later on in the series. Um, so for the Nikon D5 this is my main camera that I've had for um, over 15 months now and this camera here has been my go-to I mean when someone sees you holding this camera they know that you're a true professional I know this camera inside and out this camera has given me the results that I really want to see um, so yeah Sony you know definitely has a thing going for it. that's why they just kind of surpassed a lot of uh, different companies and you know, the glass that they have available for the lenses is amazing and the sensor is also the same sensor that is in the Nikon so you know that Sony is definitely something that is going to be giving everybody um, a chance to show the results that they really want. Since I do have the Sony A7R2, I did use the same kind of settings into the A9 and since Sony basically has the same kind of you know settings available on both cameras minus that there is you know some major differences now that there is the electronic shutter that's the only thing that I really had some um, not difficulties but maybe some challenges trying to get to work with my um, Nikon flashes for instance because um, I didn't bring the pro photos with me on this long weekend because you know I really wanted to just kind of you know get used to all the systems all three systems at once and you know take three different types of photos for you guys to see like what they look like in raw and also what they look like after you process them um, I do love that you know the A9 has more room for so the megapixels are a little bit smaller so it's more easier for me to be able to transfer that onto my computer and begin the culling process and the culling process on the A9 is you know really easy since the size of the pictures are much smaller so I am able to delete many more photos at a faster time than when I'm using the card on my computer from the A7R2 because the you know megapixel so um, on the A9 I do think that you know I did just purchase the Sony um, I forgot which model it is but the Sony flash I will get back to you on the model number of the flash but I did also purchase um, two Godox flashes the AD200 We're going to go through some of the settings that I put on this weekend and um, you'll see that I shoot in RAW and that I do like the compressed version of the file size and the aspect ratio I keep it the same and the most important thing is the color profile and the color profile I set it to 
neutral because I like to change all of the settings once I go and post and use it in Lightroom to change things around. So the ISO, um, I always do manual. I never like to use auto because you never know your situation. You can go into different things and you can see that, you know, um, I'm more of a manual shooter than having to depend on the camera to tell me what I should see and what should be exposed properly. And the creative style right here, as you can see, is neutral. There is several different options. It does come standard when they send it out to you. And then I just like to choose neutral because it definitely helps you see things more balanced than to have like over vibrant photos or, you know, or too desaturated. Let's see. Peaking color, I chose red because yellow is really hard for me to see. <laughs> I don't know why, but there's also white as well. I don't know how people see the white ones unless, you know, it's in the dark or something. Um, and face detection is off, but you could turn that on. You could also do the um, IAF, which I haven't played around with yet because, you know, like all of this stuff just got updated with the firmware. And let's see what else. The finder monitor I put on auto. I'm used to shooting using the viewfinder, but I do like using the monitor sometimes because it does let you see the overall image. And if I'm, you know, too short for a picture, I like to, you know, raise my camera up and just use the monitor to be able to see everything. And the rule of thirds grid is really important to me. You can choose a square grid, diagonal and square grid or off, but rule of thirds is usually what I like to use to make sure my pictures are composed properly. And let's see what else we can show. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I did set up the smartphone. It is a little bit different. Now you can actually use the barcode scanner with your phone to be able to have it hooked up without having to enter all the settings manually. All right, that's it guys. And if you like my videos, feel free to subscribe and I will definitely have more videos for you guys coming in the near future with some real world experiences, maybe some weddings and you know different experiences using different lenses and updating firmware and any questions that you might have, feel free to leave it on the comment section. Thank you and have a great day.